एवरीवन वंस अगेन वेलकम बैक टू अवर चैनल बीट द नीट और आज मैं स्टार्ट करने वाली हूँ क्लास इलेवन केमिस्ट्री ऑडियो बुक राइट एंड आप लोगों की रिक्वेस्ट पे मैं वापस से क्लास इलेवन वाली स्टार्ट कर रही हूँ और कोशिश करूंगी कि जल्द से जल्द आप लोगों की ये सीरीज में कंप्लीट कर दू सो so, आज का चैप्टर है हमारा यूनिट थ्री क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ एलिमेंट्स एंड पेरियोडिसिटी इन प्रॉपर्टीज सो बच्चो दिस इज ओनली एन ऑडियो बुक सो बी स्पेसिफिक राइट तो चलिए टाइम बिना वेस्ट किए स्टार्ट करते हैं द पीरियोडिक टेबल इज आर्ग्यूएबली द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट इन केमिस्ट्री बोथ इन प्रिंसिपल एंड इन प्रैक्टिस इट इज एवरी डे सपोर्ट फॉर स्टूडेंट्स इट सजेस्ट न्यू एवेन्यूज ऑफ रिसर्च टू प्रोफेशनल एंड इट प्रोवाइड अंक्ट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ द होल ऑफ केमिस्ट्री इट इज रिमार्केबल डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन ऑफ द फैक्ट that the chemical elements are not a random cluster of entities but instead display trends and lie together in families an awareness of the periodic table is essential to anyone who wishes to distangle the world and see how it is built up from the fundamental building blocks of the chemistry the chemical elements these words are given by glen t seaborg In this unit we will study the historical development of the periodic table as it stands today and the modern periodic law. We will also learn how the periodic classification follows as a logical consequence of the electronic configuration of atoms. Finally, we shall examine some of the periodic trends in the physical and chemical properties of the elements. 3.1 Why do we need to classify elements? we know by now that the elements are the basic units of all types of matter in 1800 only 31 elements were known by 1865 the number of identified elements had more than doubled to 63 at present 114 elements are known of them the recently discovered elements are main man made efforts to synthesize new elements are continuing with such a large number of elements it is very difficult to study individually the chemistry of all these elements and their innumerable compounds individually to ease out this problem scientists searched for a systematic way to organize their knowledge by classifying the elements not only that it would rationalize known chemical facts about elements but even predict new ones for undertaking further study 3.2 genesis of periodic classification classification of elements into group and development of periodic law and periodic table are the consequences of systematizing the knowledge gained by a number of scientists through their observation and experiment the german chemist johann doberiner in early 1800 was the first to consider the idea of trends among properties of elements By 1829 he noted a similarity among the physical and chemical properties of several groups of three elements that is triads in each case he noticed that the middle element of each of the triads had an atomic weight about half way between the atomic weight of the other two also properties of the middle element were in between those of the two members since dobereiner relationship referred to as the law of triads seemed to work only for a few elements it was dismissed as coincidence the next reported attempt to classify element was made by french geologist a e b d cancor toys in 1862 i hope ki maine is name sahi pronounce kiya hai he arranged the then known elements in order of increasing atomic weights and made a cylindrical table of elements to display the periodic recurrence of properties this also did not attract much attention the english chemist john alexander newlands in 1865 propounded the law of octaves he arranged the elements in increasing order of their atomic weights and noted that every eighth element had properties similar to the first element the relationship was just like every eighth note that resembles the first in octaves of music newlands law of octaves seemed to be true only for elements up to calcium although his idea was not widely accepted at that time he for his work was later awarded davy medal in 1887 by the royal society of london the periodic law as we know it today owes its development to the russian chemist dmitri mendeleev 1834 to 1907 and the german chemist lothar meyer 1830 to 1895 
working independently both the chemist in 1869 proposed that on arranging elements in the increasing order of their atomic weights similarities appear in physical and chemical properties at regular intervals lothar mayer plotted the physical properties such as atomic volume melting point boiling point against atomic weight and obtained a periodically repeated pattern unlike new lens lothar mayer observed a change in length of that repeating pattern by 1868 lothar mayer had developed a table of the elements that closely resembles the modern periodic table however his work was not published until after the work of dmitri mendeleev the scientist who is generally credited with the development of the modern periodic table while dobreiner initiated the study of periodic relationship it was mendeleev who was responsible for publishing the periodic law of the first time it states as follows the properties of the elements are a periodic function of their atomic weights let me show you the both above tables this is the table 3.1 dobreiner's triads and here three elements are mentioned lithium sodium and potassium table 3.2 that is new lines octaves here you can see the elements and their atomic weight mendeleev arranged elements in horizontal rows and vertical columns of a table in order of their increasing atomic weights in such a way that the elements with similar properties occupied the same vertical column or group mendeleev's system of classifying elements was more elaborate than that of lothar mayer's he fully recognized the significance of periodicity and used broader range of physical and chemical properties to classify the elements in particular mendeleev relied on the similarities in the empirical formulas and properties of the compounds formed by the elements he realized that some of elements did not fit in with his scheme of classification in the order of atomic weight was strictly followed he ignored the order of atomic weights thinking that the atomic measurements might be incorrect and placed the element with similar properties together for example iodine with lower atomic weight that that of tellurium that is of group 6 was placed in group 7th along with fluorine chlorine bromine because of similarities in properties at the same time keeping his primary aim of for arranging the elements of similar properties in the same group he proposed that some of elements were still undiscovered and therefore left several gaps in the table for example both gallium and germanium were unknown at the time mendeleev published his periodic table he left the gap under aluminum and a gap under silicon and called these elements eka aluminum and eka silicon Mendeley predicted not only the existence of gallium and germanium but also described some of their general physical properties these elements were discovered later some of the properties predicted by mendeley for these elements and those found experimentally are listed in table 3.3 the boldness of mendeley's quantitative predictions and their eventual success made him and his periodic table famous Mendeleev's periodic table published in 1905 is shown in figure 3.1. Here you can see the table 3.3 Mendeleev's prediction for the elements eka aluminum that is gallium and eka silicon that is germanium. Here you can see and this is figure 3.1 that is Mendeleev's periodic table published earlier. Here you can see all the elements. 3.3 modern periodic law and the present form of the periodic table we must bear in mind that when mendeleev developed his periodic table chemist knew nothing about the internal structure of atom however the beginning of the 20th century witnessed profound developments in theories about subatomic particles in 1913 the english physicist henry moseley observed regularities in the characteristic x-ray spectra of the elements a plot of under root new where new frequency of x rays emitted against atomic number that is z gave a straight line and not plot of new versus atomic mass he thereby showed that the atomic number is a more fundamental property of an element than its atomic mass 
Mendeleev's periodic law was therefore accordingly modified and this is known as the modern periodic law. The physical and chemical properties of the elements are periodic functions of their atomic numbers. The periodic law revealed important analogies among the 94 naturally occurring elements that is neptunium and plutonium like actinium and protoactinium are also found in pitch blend and ore of uranium. It has stimulated renewed interest in inorganic chemistry and has carried into the present with the creation of artificially produced short-lived elements. You may recall that the atomic number is equal to the nuclear charge, that is number of protons or the number of electrons in neutral atom. It is then easy to visualize the significance of quantum number and electronic configuration in periodicity of elements. In fact, it is now recognized that the periodic law is essentially the consequence of periodic variation in electronic configuration which indeed determine the physical and chemical properties of elements and their compounds. Numerous forms of periodic table have been devised from time to time. Some forms emphasize chemical reactions and valence, whereas others stress the electronic configuration of elements. A modern version, the so-called long form of the periodic table of the elements, that is in figure 3.2, I will show you, is the most convenient and widely used. The horizontal rows which Mendeleev called series are called periods and the vertical columns groups. Elements having similar outer electronic configuration in their atoms are arranged in vertical columns, referred to as groups or families. According to the recommendation of International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, that is IUPAC, the groups are numbered from 1 to 18, replacing the older notation of group 1st A, 7th A, like this, up to the 7th B. And they are all together 7 periods. The period number corresponds to the highest principal quantum number N of the elements in the period. The first period contains 2 elements. The subsequent period consists of 8, 8. 18, 18 and 32 elements respectively. The seventh period is incomplete and like the sixth period would have theoretical maximum on the basis of quantum numbers of 32 elements. In this form of periodic table, 14 elements of both sixth and seventh periods that is lanthanoids and actinoids respectively are placed in separate panels at the bottom. 3.4 Nomenclature of elements with atomic numbers greater than 100. The naming of the new elements had been traditionally the privilege of the discoverer and the suggested name was ratified by the IUPAC. In recent years, this has led to some controversy. The new elements with the high, very high atomic numbers are so unstable that only minute quantities, sometimes only a few atoms of them are obtained. Their synthesis and characterization therefore requires highly sophisticated, costly equipment and lab laboratory. Such work is carried out with competitive spirit only in some laboratories in the world. Scientists before collecting the reliable data on the new element at times get tempted to claim for its discovery. For example, both American and Soviet scientists claimed credit for discovering element 104. The Americans named it Rutherfordium whereas Soviets named it Kurchatovium. To avoid such problems, the IUPAC has made the recommendation that until a new element discovered is proved and its name is officially recognized, a systematic nomenclature be derived directly from the atomic number of the elements using the numeral roots for 0 and number 1 to 9. These are shown in table 3.4. This is the table. The roots are put together in order of digits which make the atomic number and EM is added at the end. The IUPAC names for elements with Z above 100 are shown in table 3.5. This is the table 3.5. Let me show you the figure 3.2 also. Here you can see the periodic table. F in transition elements. That is lanthanide and actinoid series. Now this is the table 3.4 and this is table 3.5 nomenclature of elements with atomic number above 100. Thus the new element first gets a temporary name with symbol consisting of three letters. 
Later, permanent name and symbol are given by a vote of IUPAC representatives from each country. The permanent name might reflect the country or the state of the country in which the element was discovered or pay tribute to a notable scientist. As of now, elements with atomic numbers up to 118 have been discovered. Official names of all elements have been announced by IUPAC. 3.5 Electronic configuration of elements and the periodic table. In the preceding unit, we have learned that an electron in an atom is characterized by a set of four quantum numbers and the principal quantum number n defines the main energy level known as shell. We have also studied about the filling of electrons into different subshells also referred to as orbitals, SPDF in an atom. The distribution of electrons into orbitals of an atom is called its electronic configuration. An element's location in the periodic table reflects the quantum numbers of the last orbital filled. In this section, we will observe a direct connection between the electronic configuration of the elements and the long form of the periodic table. A. Electronic configuration in periods. The period indicates the value of n for the outermost or valence shell. In other words, successive period in periodic table is associated with the filling of the next higher principal energy level that is n is equals to 1, n is equals to 2, etc. It can be readily seen that the number of elements in each period is twice the number of atomic orbitals available in the energy level that is being filled. The first period n is equals to 1 starts with the filling of the lowest level 1s and therefore has two elements hydrogen. 1s1 and helium 1s2. When the first shell K is completed, the second period n is equals to 2 starts with lithium and the third electron enters to the 2s orbital. The next element beryllium has 4 electrons and has the electronic configuration 1s2, 2s2. Starting from the next element boron, the 2p orbitals are filled with electrons when the L shell is completed at neon 2s2, 2p6. Thus, there are 8 elements in the second period. The third period n is equals to 3 begins at sodium and the added electron enters a 3s orbital. Successive filling of 3s and 3p orbitals give rise to the third period of 8 elements from sodium to argon. The fourth period n is equals to 4 starts at potassium and the added electrons fill up the 4s orbital. Now, you may note that before the 4p orbital is filled, filling up to 3d orbitals becomes energetically favorable and we come across the so-called 3d transition series of elements. This starts from scandium z is equals to 21 and which has the electronic configuration 3d1 4s2. The 3d orbitals are filled at zinc that is z30 with electronic configuration 3d10 4s2. The fourth period ends at Krypton with the filling up to the 4p orbitals. Altogether, we have 18 elements in the fourth period. The fifth period and five beginning with rubidium. Rubidium is similar to the fourth period and contains the 4d transition series starting at yttrium Z39. This period ends at xenon with the filling up the 5p orbitals. The 6th period N6 contains 32 elements and successive electrons enter 6s, 4f, 5d and 6p orbitals. In the order filling up of the 4f orbitals begins with cerium Z58 and ends at lutetium Z71 to give the 4f in a transition series which is called the lanthanoid series. The 7th period N7 is similar to the 6th period with the successive filling up the 7s, 5f, 6d and 7p orbitals and includes most of the man-made radioactive elements. This period will end at the element with atomic number 118 which would belong to the noble gas family. Filling up the 5f orbitals after actinium that is Z89 gives the 5f inner transition series known as the actinoid series. The 4f and 5f inner transition series of elements are placed separately in the periodic table to maintain its structure and to preserve the principle of classification by keeping elements with similar properties in a single column. b. Group-wise electronic configuration Elements in the same vertical column or group have similar valence shell electronic configuration. 
the same number of electrons in the outer orbitals and similar properties for example the group 1 elements alkali metals all have an s1 valence shell electronic configuration as shown below thus it can be seen that the properties of an element have periodic dependence upon its atomic number and not on relative atomic mass 3.6 electronic configuration and types of elements spdf blocks the of bow principle and the electronic configuration of atoms provide a theoretical foundation for the periodic classification the elements in a vertical column of the periodic table constitute a group or family and exhibit similar chemical behavior this similarity arises because these elements have the same number and same distribution of electrons in the outermost orbital we can classify the elements into four blocks s block p block d block and f block depending on the type of atomic orbitals that are being filled with electrons this is illustrated in figure 3.3 we notice two exceptions to this categorization strictly helium belongs to the s block but its positioning in the p block along with other group 18 elements is justified because it has a completely filled valence shell 1s2 and as a result exhibits properties characteristic of other noble gases The other exception in hydrogen it has only one s electron and hence can be placed in group 1 alkali metals it can also gain an electron to achieve a noble gas arrangement and hence it can behave similar to a group 17 that is halogen family elements because it is a special case we shall place hydrogen separately at the top of the periodic table as shown in figure 3.2 and figure 3.3 we will briefly discuss the salient features of the four types of elements marked in the periodic table more about these elements will be discussed later during the description of their features certain terminology has been used which has been classified in section 3.7 3.6.1 the s block elements The elements of group 1 and group 2 that is alkali metals and alkaline earth metals which have ns1 and ns2 outermost electronic configuration belong to the s block elements they are all reactive metals with low ionization enthalpies they lost the outermost electron readily to form one positive ion in the case of alkali metals or two positive ion in the case of alkaline earth metals the metallic character and the reactivity increase as we go down the group because of high reactivity they are never found pure in nature the compounds of the s block elements with the exception of those of lithium and beryllium are predominantly ionic 3.6.2 the p block elements the p block elements comprise those belonging in group 13 to 18 and these together with the s block elements are called the representative elements or main group elements the outermost electronic configuration varies from ns2 np1 to ns2 np6 in each period at the end of each period is a noble gas element with a closed valence shell ns2 np6 configuration all the orbitals in the valence shell of the noble gases are completely filled by electrons and it is very difficult to alter this stable arrangement by the addition or removal of electron The noble gases thus exhibit very low chemical reactivity preceding the noble gases family are two chemically important groups of nonmetals they are the halogen group 17 and the chalcogens group 16 these two groups of elements have highly negative electron gain enthalpies and readily add one or two electron respectively to attain the stable noble gas configuration The non-metallic character increases as we move from left to right across a period and metallic character increases as we go down the group. 3.6.3 the D block elements transition elements. These are the elements of group 3 to 12 in the center of the periodic table. These are characterized by the filling of inner D orbitals by electrons and are therefore referred to as D block elements. These elements have the general outer electronic configuration that is n minus 1 d 1 to 10 ns 0 to 2 they are all metals they mostly formed colored ions exhibit variable valence that is oxidation states paramagnetism and oftenly used as catalyst however zinc cadmium mhg which have the electronic configuration n minus 1 d 10 ns 2 do not show most of the properties of transition elements in a way Transition metals form a bridge between the chemically active metals of S block elements and the less active metal of group 13 and 14 and thus 
take their familiar name transition elements. 3.6.4 the F block element that is the inner transition elements. The two rows of elements at the bottom of the periodic table called the lanthanoids that is CEZ58 to LUZ71 and the actinoids that is THZ90 to LR that is Z103 are characterized by the outer electronic configuration N-2, F1 to 14, N-1, D0 to 1 and NS2. The last con electron added to each element is filled in F orbital. These two series of elements are hence called the inner transition elements, F block elements. They are all metals within the each series. The properties of the elements are quite similar. The chemistry of the early actinoid is more complicated than the corresponding lanthanoids due to the large number of oxidation states possible for these actinoid element. Actinoid elements are radioactive. Many of the actinoid elements have been made only in nanogram quantities or even less by nuclear reactions and their chemistry is not fully studied. The elements after uranium are called transuranium elements. 3.6.5 Metals, Nonmetals and Metalloids In addition to displaying the classification of elements into S, P, D and F blocks, figure 3.3 shows another broad classification of elements based on their properties. The elements can be divided into metals and non-metals. Metal comprises more than 78% of all known elements and appear on the left side of periodic table. Metals are usually solid at room temperature. Mercury is an exception. Gallium and cesium also have very low melting points that is 303 Kelvin and 302 Kelvin respectively. Metals is usually have high melting and boiling points. They are good conductors of heat and electricity. They are malleable, can be flattened into thin sheets by hammering and ductile can be drawn into the wires. In contrast, non-metals are located at the top right hand side of the periodic table. In fact, in horizontal row, the property of elements change from metallic on the left to non-metallic on the right. Non-metals are usually solids or gases at room temperature with low melting and boiling points. That is boron and carbon are exception. They are poor conductors of heat and electricity. Most non-metallic solids are brittle and are neither malleable nor ductile. The elements become more metallic as we go down a group. The non-metallic character increases as one goes from left to right across the periodic table. The change from metallic to non-metallic character is not abrupt as shown by the thick zigzag line in figure 3.3. The elements example silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, tellurium bordering this line and running diagonally across the periodic table shows properties that are characteristic of both metals and non-metals. These elements are called semi-metals or metalloids.